Now drawings like this can look very dramatic and also sell quite well for those of you that uh, wanted to earn some money from your artwork but using pastels does bring up a few challenges so let me show you exactly how I did it. Okay so dark grey pastel mat paper, got some black gouache paints, a couple of cheap pencils, a little bit of a mixing tray as well just a plastic tray and some regular tap water. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I want the black of the elephant to be in place so I can easily see the shape of it but I don't want it to smudge and move. So if I did this in black pastel obviously when I'm doing the sky it would really um, contaminate all of the wonderful bright sky. I want to do the sky to be able to come over the edges of the elephant so that when I do this in pastel as you see later on it, it works out nice and crisp on the edges which is what I want with a silhouette. Now you could don't have to really use gouache. The reason I use gouache is because it dries perfectly matte to a texture very similar to the um, pastel matte paper so I know the pastel will go over the top of it easily. Now some acrylic paints dry nice and matte as well but some of them dry more like a plastic uh, surface to it and it's shiny and the pastel won't stick to the surface. You could use um, watercolour black just don't water it down too much but personally I find that the gouache works uh, the best and you've only got to buy really a tube of black. I use it when I'm doing spots on animals for the same purpose. I can show easily the location it stays there and it doesn't smudge or muddy. Another alternative would be to do this with pastel and then to use the clay fontaine fixative spray to fix it in place and that would give you know pretty much the same effect. The whole drawing took me around about hour and a half two hours to do. I uh, really want to concentrate on the sky for this one it's very dramatic very colorful so areas like this where I'm just filling in with paint that's where I'll catch up a bit of time for us and um, speed it all up for you. Okay so I'm just going to carry on now first outlining with gouache and then filling it in and all you've got to do is just put out a bit of your black paint as you can see on my painting uh, palette there and just some normal tap water. Don't water it down too much or it'll start spreading but you need to water it enough so that paint comes off of the brush. When I'm filling it in I'll just use a larger brush to do it a bit more quickly. Now for the background I'm going to be mostly using pastel sticks, any brand, this one happens to be Jackson's own brand, Rembrandt I like, but I like those that are slightly harder than say a Unison which are quite soft. Now the reason I'm using the sticks, as we know the background is going to be extremely bright in most places, at least very vibrant, and the sticks They've got more colour, more pigment in them than pencils and they're more opaque, much more opaque than pan pastels so that gives you that vibrant, more vibrant colour. You could do this in pans, I've shown a vibrant sky like that, I've also shown one previously using just pencils so you know whatever supplies you've got I just personally find I've got quite a few of, of the soft sticks and they really lend themselves beautifully to doing things like colourful and uh, as I said vibrant backgrounds in particular. Using my finger just fairly gently pressing it into the surface because we need to fill the lower 
areas of the tool for the paper up that'll get rid of that that gritty speckledy look that we see and, and everything will go much smoother in appearance now I've already picked out my colors I kind of match the sticks up by the uh, reference photo now I'm deliberately putting in a bit of the lightest color and that's going to be right down here that's almost white it's kind of a, a, a Naples yellow just off white and then we've got a strip of very vibrant pretty pure yellow on top of that and then eventually we go into the oranges and the reds but the purpose of that is I now have immediately on my paper the darkest darks a silhouette and pretty much the lightest light right down here near the horizon on the sunset remember what I say in most of my videos by doing something like this early on you can then judge the tonal values better and from there the colors better by having the light and the dark in place early on like this we've got that full tonal range and now it's just a case of really looking where all of these colors are going to sit and starting to block them in and bottom left hand corner I'll just pop the finished drawing so you can see exactly what I'm working towards now don't forget because that's taken with my digital SLR camera it's more representative of how it looks in real life whereas the video always lacks a bit of contrast and um, punch to it so keep that in mind but it'll, it will look quite close in the end as you can see it's all about layering colors I'm not putting much down at the moment I'm working out exactly where we need to have some of these red pinky tones and then up here there's a bit of a lighter purple going on but it will all look gritty and pretty much unsmooth at the early stages you can see that the pastel matte paper has got a roughish surface although when you say some people call it a sanded surface not really a sanded surface it's a fibrous surface when people buy their first pieces of pastel mat they expect it to be like sandpaper and then they wonder if there's something wrong with the paper when actually it's got a bit of a fuzzy feel to it but you can see when you put pastel down on the surface it does look gritty okay so we've always got to push down into the surface and that's what I'm doing here small round strokes when I need to wipe my finger to clean it microfiber cloth is sitting there in my lap and I can just rub it on there and that takes enough off to to clean my fingers enough I don't have to go washing my fingers in between okay so that's the main colors blocked in and they're quite accurate as well now I can refine everything so I could come back in now with my pastel sticks and refine it looking more for the subtleties some areas may have you know like this a little bit of a ready purpley tinge to it or or go even darker then I'm using a pu dark purple pencil so that's what I mean about picking out refinement and subtle differences. I like to use pencils for that stage fairly often. If you put down lots and lots of pastel, too much pastel, then at this stage, if you're going with pencils, you'll see your pencil will act like a snowplow 
picking up snow, picking up pastel dust and you get grooves in it. So then you know you've really put a lot too much pastel down. Okay, background's done of the sky. Now it's time to start putting in all of the really dark details. Now you can use just a standard pastel pencil. I'd recommend one that's hard, so something like a pit pastel pencil, but they're not as black as these Cretacolor chalks. So this is a Cretacolor black chalk, basically just black pastel, and it's compressed so you can sharpen the edge using a normal handheld pen pencil sharpener, you know, one of those, those cheap uh, pencil sharpeners. And I'm just picking out the little tiny individual leaves on the edge of the um, surface. So there's a, a pit pastel, you see I'm trying that. Again, a very similar effect, but in real life, it's not quite as dark. So if you possibly can, a Cretacolor dark is really good or just use uh, the pit like I'm doing here. I just get an extra degree really of darkness with this credit color and it's nice and easy to sharpen. You can see it's really just picking out the individual leaves very well. And then I'll just, once I've done the outer edge, I can start filling in some of the, the masses and really darken those areas up. So I'll just carry on and put in the outer edge of the leaves. And now as I said, I'm starting to fill in where we've got more blocks of color. Down here I've got some fine branches and twigs in here so I'm using the pencil again because I've got that one sharpened to a bit of a finer point and it's a little bit harder than the credit color so when I want a darker branch that's where I've come in with that credit color you see I've got plenty of control over it and some more branches as I said, I can then use that to um, fill in some of these darks. But you can already kind of see how the sky is starting to look brighter now the darks are going in. So as I bring this video to an end, hope you've enjoyed it and found it of use. As I said earlier, there's a one hour plus video of this where I go into a lot more detail on this technique on my Patreon art channel, that's tier three. And don't forget, there's hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of pastel lessons over on there. From just $4, you actually get probably a hundred or, or 200 hours worth of videos just on four dollars a month there's no contract 
roughly 1500 members on there learning my techniques. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you all again on the next one.